Good evening to you and welcome to the Alpha Industry Awards Ceremony. I'm Jerry Gannon with the great honor to be your MC for tonight. And uh, it's a very important occasion on behalf of the Australian Lock Feeders Association, its board and secretariat. Let me firstly acknowledge the traditional owners of these lands on which we meet and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Of course, we'd all love to be gathered in some fancy venue all dressed up to the nines. Well, I am, I don't know about you. But of course, COVID has put pay to that particular plan. However, we are grateful that we can get together uh, online here and celebrate together the heroes of our industry. Now, Alpha is on Instagram and Facebook. And so if you'd like to get involved in this evening's festivities socially, we encourage you to post a photo during the night of uh, whoever you're watching along with and tag, please tag Alpha for a reshare. So this evening, we're going to honor the best of the best from the feedlot industry. We have five awards that will be announced to, to tonight, the winners of which will be announced tonight. And we're also delighted to have on board our sponsors who have been very supportive of not only the awards program, but the industry in general. So we thank them for, uh, for their support. So the order of ceremonies is such that we will kick off with the uh, award for innovation. That will be followed by the Excellence in Feedlot Education Medal, the Young Lot Feeder of the Year, where we will have young Molly Sage, who was crowned the 2020 Young Lot Feeder. Uh, of, uh, she'll, she'll join us and give us an update on what she's been up to. And then following that, we'll move to the new Community Heroes Award and conclude the evening with announcing the winners of the Australian Feedlot of the Year competition. And we will hopefully be able to speak to our winners uh, as they are presented. So without further ado, let's crack on with the 2021 awards presentation as we introduce our first award. And that is the Alpha Award for Innovation uh, sponsored by Integrated Animal Production. Clever, non-commercial ideas and innovations that have been incorporated into day-to-day -day feedlot operations and generally making a difference have been entered into the Alpha Awards for Innovation 2021 in a category proudly supported by Integrated Animal Production. Votes for entries into this award have been coming in by popular vote since the beginning of September. Let me introduce a representative from the sponsor, Dr. Stephen Bonner, who is a consulting nutritionist with Integrated Animal Production to introduce the entrance and to announce the runner-up and winner. Good evening, Stephen. Thank you, Jerry. Integrated Animal Production is proud to have sponsored the Innovation Award since its beginning but over 20 years ago. And thanks to all the contestants, I'm, I'm sure you'll agree that each entry is evidence of the innovative minds that we have within the industry. So first up, we have the Jinder Lee post pot digger innovation. So installing a concrete sleeve around steel posts helps to prevent posts rusting out prematurely. To dig around each post takes a lot of work. The team at Gender Lee have developed the post pot digger to help solve this problem. A steel sleeve with auger and cutting teeth attaches to the post, post hole borer and fits over the post. The result is a massive time saving during construction. Next up is the Paradise Beef Feed Bunk Sweeper Innovation. We all know the value of maintaining good bunk hygiene, but no one really likes shoveling bunks, do they? The Paradise Beef Feed Bunk Sweeper helps to achieve our feed bunk hygiene requirements while saving time. At a cost of $250, this is a fraction of the cost of a commercial bunk sweep. The, the Wonga Plains Penrider app innovation is an app that can be downloaded onto any smartphone. The app is to facilitate live data being at the fingertips of a pen riders, hospital attendants, and even the feed mill team. Time won't permit listing all of the features, but in brief includes 
um, feedlot map to identify high risk pens, lot data for each pen, including, for example, days on feed, feed intake history, vet tre treatment protocols, access to and ability to edit pen movement data on the fly in the feedlot, a dashboard summarizing key performance metrics and health, daily feedlot tasks, and perhaps my favorite, a visual ID search feature. Next up, we have the Rangers Valley Super Duper Pooper Scooper Innovation. This was designed to solve the issue of blocked water, uh, water trough drainage lines through the buildup of manure, wood chip, hair or gravel. The Pooper Scooper enables contaminants to be removed before removing the bung, thereby presenting co preventing costly damage to blocked drainage lines. Next up, number five, the, the Dimbola cast cattle rider innovation. Riding a cast animal needs to be done efficiently and in a, in a way that ensures safety to the animal and staff. The Dimbola cast cattle rider ticks all these boxes while bypassing the use of heavy machinery and multiple staff. Using this method, an animal can be safely rided and rolled using nine meters of rope and an ATV. The Springfield Gate Stop Innovation. Now here's a great innovation to save time and frustration when handling double grates on a windy day, especially on a horse. The Springfield Gate Stop includes 1.6 uh, meter length of steel rod through the end, inserted through the end of each gate. Once in position, the rod is dropped to pin the gate while the second gate is gathered. When not in use, the rod can be hooked, easily hooked up out of the way, allowing easily access from the saddle. And finally, the Rangers Valley reusable PVC flytrap innovation. It's a cost-effective and simple method of placing fly baits within the feedlot. The design uses a two metre length of PVC pipe it is capped at either end and slots cut through the length. The flytrap is designed to hang on fence lines for its ease of use and is fully reusable. So there's the list. Thanks to all those that have entered. I trust you will appreciate the value of these innovations. And it, you may even have similar innovations at your feedlot. And I hope that these may inspire you to enter these in the next year's Innovation Award. Now, let's announce the winner, followed by the runner-up. So with 411 votes, the winner is Ryan Smith from Rangers Valley. So congratulations, Ryan. Ryan, who will receive a four, uh, sorry, $500 check and it's coming your way, Ryan. Now with 404 votes, the runner up is Shane Bullock from T's Jindalee Feedlot. So congratulations, Shane, who will receive a check for $250. So that's all from me. Thanks, over to you, Jerry. Thank you very much. And uh, what great innovation from uh, the industry there with uh, two great winners. So congratulations to both our winners. Well, now we come to the Alpha Excellence in Feedlot Education Medal sponsored by Zoetis. Uh, the Alpha Excellence in Feedlot Education Medal is about recognizing individuals with the commitment to career development. Entrants need to demonstrate excellence in feedlot operation skills and they must be applying their skills or knowledge as a result of participating in or graduating from training. The overall prize for the winner includes a keepsake medal, $500 in cash, a complimentary registration to an Alpha 2022 workshop of choice, and the opportunity to attend two sessions within the Alpha 2021 Margin and People Management Program or MPM for short, including accommodation and travel. These are the Zoetis uh, facilitated uh, sessions. You can check out the Alpha website for full details uh, of the MPM program. The runner up finalists will also receive an engraved leather mat. Now, let me introduce a representative from the sponsor, Sally Osman, who is the veterinary operations manager with Zoetis. 
Sally, can you introduce the entrants and announce the winner, please? Thanks, Jerry, and thank you to all our applicants in the competition for 2021. It was Jeff and my pleasure this year to meet a really impressive group of candidates. The quality of the finalists was exceptional and it made our job really difficult to select just one winner. The finalists are Annabelle Madden from Smithfield Cattle Company. Annabelle is currently completing her Diploma of HR Management with the Australian Institute of Management. While studying, Annabelle is also employed at Smithfield as a human resources, internal communications, social media and administration assistant. Annabelle identified a significant gap in the formal HR and training processes at Smithfield. And this year, she has implemented a program to develop policies, training modules and formal guidelines around operational practices at the feedlot. Annabelle impressed us with her strong initiative and maturity beyond her young years. Her training has developed her skills as a leader and innovator, which has seen her become the driver behind significant tangible change in the way Smithfield train and manage their staff. Our next finalist is Beck Donnelly from Roma Feedlot and Spelling Yards. Beck's feedlot career began in 2013 as a pen writer, and she now fulfills the challenging role of operations manager at Roma, where she has a very hands-on role managing nine staff. Beck completed the Alpha Margin and People Management program this year, and she shared with us her experience of applying these skills. Beck was able to adapt her management style to achieve an improvement in staff morale and productivity. It was clearly evident when we interviewed Beck that she had been, you know, had a very strong focus on her relationships in the workplace and that while challenging, her role as people manager also brings her enormous satisfaction. We really enjoyed Beck's discussion about applying her newly learned skills around adapting her management style to accommodate different personality types to get the best out of her staff. Our third finalist is Brenton Watterson from AACO's Aranui Feedlot. Brenton completed a Diploma of Ag in beef production, which took him onto the role of Assistant Sally Yard Superintendent prior to moving to a career in the feedlot industry in 2017. Brenton now manages a team of 10 as the Livestock Manager at Aranui and completed his Cert 3 in feedlot operations pen writing last year. Brenton is passionate about the importance of training to improve work practices in all areas within the feedlot. And since completing his diploma, he has enhanced induction protocols and modified and improved the way Aranui conduct pen writer training. We were impressed with Brenton's commitment in that he spends most of his every day at work training those around him to ensure the continuous improvement of the livestock team and the business operations at Aranui. Our fourth and last finalist is Cameron Fork from Tease Australia's Condomine Feedlot. Cameron has a background in both farming and mechanics, and he's currently employed at Condomine as their feed mill leading hand. He completed Alpha's milling and nutrition course in July this year, where he learned new ways to improve performance within the feed mill and feeding operations. Cameron has been able to implement his learnings into day-to-day -day operations at the yard to assist with getting more consistent feed intakes through improvements in feed allocations and bunk hygiene. We found Cameron to be a genuine and committed individual who thrives best through his hands-on learning. A great example being the integral role Cameron played during a very challenging extended power outage where he was able to demonstrate his calm, can-do attitude in the face of a crisis. And while all of these four finalists are deserving, we can only have one winner. And the winner of the 2021 Alpha Feedlot Education Medal this year is Brenton Watterson. Congratulations goes to Brenton, our winner and well-deserved Brenton. We're going to play a little bit of your video uh, before we cut to you live to have, uh, have a few words. Thanks. My passion and why I love the industry is obviously the cattle and the overall process from start to finish, from becoming from backgrounding to processing, 
Although I was a progress with my career in the industry, the excitement to learn of the new technology and innovative processes being developed, most recent being the bunk bot and the idea of turning manure into pellets. See the industry developing with this technology is a good sign that we're doing our part to become more efficient and utilising byproducts. And whilst it's important to respect the past, it's equally important to embrace the change. I chose to enter the feedlot education medal competition because ultimately I would like to complete the NPM program. And with Zoetis kindly sponsoring the medal and sessions within NPM, I believe it's a great opportunity to get a taste of the program and also network with like-minded people. The course I chose to complete with AA Company was a Certificate 3 in feedlot operations focusing on pen riding. I found this course to be a good refresher on top of my previous qualifications. It also provided me with a wake-up call with the importance of correct procedure and training. In the busy workload that is consistent with feedlotting, it's easy to overlook the correct methods of teaching and safe practices in the industry. Since completing my course, I've been able to develop new protocols for induction for needling and HCP implantation. It's also helped me with my pen writing and the technique I use to explain and demonstrate tasks to new team members. I believe completing my nominated certificate within the company it's provided me with a good knowledge base to help me fulfill my role as livestock manager. Uh, it's helped me save time whilst completing tasks and most importantly, change the way I train my staff, which is my main objective in terms of helping my team. I hope to continue to develop my knowledge and skill set in the feedlotting industry, but my main goal would be to successfully manage a feedlot and develop a role which allows me to buy and sell livestock. My short term goal is to continue to better myself in my current role as livestock manager and set my team up with good skills that will help them develop themselves. And Brenton joins us now. Brenton, uh, congratulations and uh, well done. Uh, were you surprised to win or did you think you were in with a good chance? Uh, no, very surprised. Um, yeah, thanks very much. It's a, it's a great privilege and uh, yeah. Entering the, entering the competition itself, how much did it improve your knowledge of the industry and your own personal standing within it? Um, oh, well, once I um, finished my course or during my course, it, it sort of opened my eyes a fair bit to things that do get missed in training and, and where there are sort of, sort of gaps as well. So, yeah, during my, during my training and after the completion of my, of my certificate, um, yeah, I think it's helped me greatly in my position and hopefully it's helped my team as well. In your video, you mentioned a couple of plans that you have for the future. What's the ultimate aim for you, Brenton? Oh, well, I'd like to become a feedlot manager one day and, and um, like I said, I'd, I'd also like to, to dive into buying and selling a few cattle in the, in the feedlot industry. So mm. you'll see where it leads me. Well, well done. And once again, congratulations. No, thanks very much. Brendan Watterson, our winner. So now we move to the Alpha Young Lot Feeder of the Year Award sponsored by Performance Feeds. Uh, it's, uh, this award embodies passion, leadership, development and initiative and encourages emerging dedicated employees to contribute their ideas and vision for lock feeding at a national level. Entrants are required to submit a compelling essay on a real or perceived industry issue, discussing its implications for the feedlot industry and to explore a proposed solution to be successful in the award. They also must demonstrate their leadership potential through a defined set of criteria. I'd now like to introduce you to the 2020 Young Lot Feeder, Molly Sage, who will carry on the announcement from here. Molly. Thanks, Jerry. So from a record of 19 entries this year, six progressed to the second round of judging where they undertook a formal interview with the independent judging channel. That comprising of Des Reinhardt, Matt Lurz, who was the 2009 Crown Young Lot Feeder, and Scott Slots. That was followed by a presentation to the Alpha Council. The four finalists then were engaged in professional development training and required to produce a video on themselves, their essay and their aspirations. You can watch these on Alpha's YouTube channel. The winner receives $5,000 towards undertaking a professional development course or overseas study trip. 
and a grain-fed beef industry scholarship to attend the Australian Rural Leadership Foundation trial for Emerging Leaders Program valued at $10,450. After winning the 2021 Young Lock Leader Award for me, um, and even throughout the whole process, I got to meet some really inspiring people throughout the entire industry, and it's really opened a lot of opportunities for me, especially in my professional growth. And I think this Young Lock Leader Award just represents so many values that we have as an industry. And I just want to say a huge congratulations to all four finalists. Your videos were outstanding this year. Um, so it gives me great pleasure to introduce those winners. Um, well, winners, sorry, the finalists for this year. Um, so we'll begin with the first of the four, um, James Guest, Feed Lot Manager at Smithfield Cattle Company, Sapphire Feed Lot Queensland, and we'll be watching his video. Long-fed Wagyu cattle are occupying Australian feedlots at a higher capacity than ever before. With this comes challenges that require proactive solutions, like determining the best time to perform butchering procedures, which improves animal welfare and performance outcomes. Focusing on non-pharmacological intervention highlights our commitment to the antimicrobial stewardship, giving Australian feedlotters an edge over our international competitors and provides our consumers with a world-class high-end product. After growing up on a cattle backgrounding operation, I started feedlotting straight after university. I've spent the past eight years learning everything I can about grain feeding cattle and developing myself as an industry leader. The Young Lot Feeder of the Year Award presents an opportunity for me to demonstrate my gratitude to those that have helped me get to where I am today by giving back to an industry that has given me so much. I now have a young family and I'll be teaching my kids about the food supply chain and the crucial role that lot feeding plays in this. My name is James Guest and I'm excited for what the future holds for Australian lot feeding and how I can contribute to maintaining and improving the perceived value of grain fed beef. That was brilliant. So now we'll go to Caleb Hodgins, the Operations Manager at Teas Australia, Charlton, Victoria. With a little adventure, a lot of dedication, the grain fed beef industry has a great story to tell. We are food providers. It's our livelihood we share with the world. Our people, far and wide, is where and how we've drawn the passion that leads this industry. We represent local communities, regional shires, families, and corporates. <coughs> We're thinking outside the box and changing up the model. With what we do now, what will it look like in years to come? We're asking, we're listening. We're seeking shared values, behaviors, and expectations in and around our industry. Getting it right from the ground up is key for our continued success. That's why I'm championing an idea I call good foundations, good cattle, where the literal and metaphorical foundations meet. Roller compacted concrete provides safe working conditions for our people and our livestock. A solution for increased health outcomes with prevention, welfare stewardships, and interventions. We could achieve even higher standards of performance and a quality product aligning to the all-important consumer demand and social license. My gap year turned into a career where I bucked the trend moving from the north to the south. I'm Kaylin Hodgson, Operations Manager at Charlton Feedlot. As the next generation of this industry, we will provide an answer to the questions asked. We will be a part of the solution. Now we'll be watching Lucy Morris, who's Senior Operations Manager at TW First and Lake Preston Feedlot in WA. For over 100 years, my family has been involved in agriculture. And so I understand how important it is to protect our industry for the generations to come. If I was to win the Young Lot Feeder of the Year Award, it will help me to advocate to improve biosecurity measures throughout our beef production systems. COVID has shown us how quickly disease can spread globally. We need to be ready. 
Preparation means we have consistent national legislation to underpin and drive compliance for biosecurity. It means we have a renewable funding stream which is adaptive to combat the changes to come. It needs to start here with an emphasis on good biosecurity practices right from the farm gate. My role as Senior Operations Manager is to ensure that our company is ready for whatever challenges are to come. I want the next generation of beef enthusiasts to enjoy building a career in this amazing sector as much as I have. You can find me here at Lake Preston Feedlot working to ensure that our systems are ready for the challenges to come. So remember, biosecurity is my responsibility and it's yours. And lastly, we have Simon Kensett, Feedlot Manager from AACO GNU Feedlot in Queensland. What do all these things have in common? They're all being measured. Hi, I'm Simon Kensett, and if I was to be named the Young Lot Feeder of the Year, not only would I be proud and honoured, but I'd start to measure something that as an industry we may be overlooking. I've had an unorthodox career path that's led me to feedlotting here at Canoe. First, I had a passion for animal behaviour, then a passion for human behaviour, and it turns out those, like, those two actually aren't that different at all. And finally, I've got a huge passion for business efficiency. We measure nearly everything when it comes to cattle and commodities. And that is the reason why we've improved so much as an industry. This is something as an industry we should be extremely proud of. But employee engagement is the next frontier of measurement and improvement. We, the people, underpin everything that happens at a feedlot. So let's start measuring us and our employee engagement. This is not a groundbreaking idea and has been proven in the past. We could leverage off of the already established Feedlot Tech platform and roll out a confidential employee survey. The people within this industry are our most important asset. So let's start measuring something in order to improve it. Once again, a huge congratulations to all four of the finalists. You've done an outstanding job this year, absolutely topped it. So it gives me great pleasure to announce the winner of the 2020 Young Lot Feeder Award, and that goes to James Guess from Smithfield Cattle Company, Sapphire Feedlot. Congratulations. <laughs> and. Uh... James has got a retinue of supporters uh, around him. Uh, James, can you uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Jerry. Uh, well done, James. Congratulations. Uh, did that come as a surprise, or uh, were you quietly confident, as they say? No, there's um, well, congratulations first to the other uh, four finalists and all the other entrants. It's um, it's great to see such talent, young talent, coming up through the industry, and uh, no, definitely. Done a lot of hard work's gone into it over the years, Jerry, um, to get to where I am today. And probably a few people I need to thank, um, especially Performance Feeds and Scott Sloss and his team. Uh, they're ongoing support for, for advocating young leaders coming up um, through the industry and, um, and the support that Alpha has behind this award. So um, it's something that yeah, I'm very honoured and also honoured to be a part of um, Smithfield Cattle Company. Um, the, the team we've got here is exceptional and um, yeah, I am um, very privileged to work with them. Um, and I suppose some of the guys here now, uh, but special thanks to uh, Rob Smith, Jason, Andrew, Barb, uh, Don. Yes, what about your, your boss there to your left? <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, it's a huge thank you to all those guys and, and the wider team and also um, the close team I work with at Sapphire as well that um, make this all possible. Um, and then I suppose I should also Mention um, my family, um, my parents who, who gave me all the opportunities to get to where I am today and also my wife, Hannah, um, and our young family. We, um, she's been on me this whole journey and um, before I started feedlotting and um, upped our lives a couple of times to, to move for my career. So I should um, say a special thanks to her to, um, to doing that. So, well, and um, that thank was, you. Uh, that was an acceptance speech of uh, Oscar uh, level performance, James. But uh, let me ask you a serious 
uh, question. As a young lot feeder, um, you're working with the, the, the previous generation, as it were. Do you ever get the feeling, because you're more technologically ahead than many of the older blokes, do you ever get the feeling that uh, you want to say, stand back and let me at it? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think... Um... I think we've, we've got so much knowledge we need to absorb off, um, off the guys that have been doing this for the, the 30 plus years and, um, and, and take on board their experiences to, to put into our day-to-day -day stuff. The technology and how that's all coming through, that's just going to assist us going forward to make our lives easier. Um, but back to the, the groundwork that's been done over the last 30 years, is to, we've definitely got to um, respect that and, um, and take it all on board. So now looking ahead, what do you plan to do with this next year ahead as the reigning um, lot feeder, if you like? Uh, it's, it's, just a, it's just an advocate for, for the industry. It's, um, it's someone that can represent the industry going forward and, um, and, and be that figure that people, um, to hopefully attract people um, coming, come school leavers, people that are, are down other career paths that want to come into the industry. And, um, and, and people can see that there is, um, there's career paths in it and very successful career paths um, if, you, if you engage yourself um, in the industry the right ways. All right. Well, the three blokes behind you are rapidly uh, drinking uh, all your uh, beer. So I'll let you get back to it. And once again, congratulations. Thank you very much. There you go. Well, now we come to the Alpha Community Heroes Award, which is sponsored by Lalamand Animal Nutrition. Australian feedlots are vital to the fabric of rural and regional uh, Australia. They create much needed jobs, they support families and they contribute to local economies and indeed the environment. This newly established award, the Alpha Community Heroes Award, recognises and rewards those feedlots that are actively nourishing their local communities and environments by going above and beyond to support their community, give back and better the environment around them. The winner receives an engraved winner's plaque and a $5,000 cash donation towards their chosen local charity, business or feedlot initiative to assist in building up their initiative. So to introduce the entrance and to tell us a bit about the judges, we welcome Ben Morganson, who's marketing manager from Lalamond. Uh, over to you, Ben. Thanks, Jerry. Um, before I announce the tonight's winners, I'd just like to say that Lalamond Animal Nutrition is extremely proud to sponsor the Alpha Community Heroes Award. Um, as you know, this award recognises those feedlots that are taking that extra step to make a positive social or environmental contribution to the local communities in which they live and work. Um, it's been a challenging year for us all, so I think it's you know I, I think recognising individuals or organisations that have still found the time and commitment you know, to add that value to the local communities is particularly special. Um, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank each and every applicant for the generous efforts over a diverse range of initiatives. Um, you should all be very proud of the work that you've done and continue to do. Um, let's look at the entrance. Uh, first up, we have Wandoan Show Carcass Competition, Varuna Feedlot. Um, they connected with the local Wandoan Show to host um, local producers who went to pens into the show's carcass competition, cattle are fed at Waruna and, and judged on the hook. Um, next, we have supporting our future generations, GNU Feedlot, and their efforts in fundraising for the Comet State School, so students get to experience school camp. Um, next up, we have connecting students and teachers to the feedlot industry, Smithfield Feedlot. They partnered with Proston State School on their rural studies program to help compete in local cattle shows. Uh, next, we have Tease Australia Charlton showing community spirit, Tease Australia Charlton, and their efforts to educate and engage with the local community by demonstrating their livestock team's horseman ship skills at the local Charlton show. Uh, we have the wolf founding supporter, Wonga Plains Feedlot, um, and their efforts supporting the wolf group to build a community for women to unofficially mentor and, and support each other. We have nutrition from soil biology to beef, Paradise Beef Feedlot, um, and they're offering biomineral farming programs and a, a depot for local feedlot clients and community to collect biological fertilizers to help improve soil health. Um, next, we have an on-site effluent dump, Jindalee Feedlot, 
which is an in-ground drive-over pit used uh, by livestock trucks to empty their effluent belly tanks, um, you know, ensuring that responsible waste disposal. And lastly, we have the uh, regeneration of Oakey Creek Stockyard Kerwee Feedlot, um, the restoration of the Oakey Creek to its former glory by introducing native species back into the creek and by creating an environment around the creek for improved breeding conditions. Um, I'd also like to take this time to thank my fellow judges, uh, Tess Herbert from Gundermain Pastoral Company and Cheryl Svano from Bellevue Feedlot in Queensland. Uh, we had a, a tough job deciding on our winner, but we felt that the project that was making the biggest localised impact and demonstrated both sustainability and scalability was Smithfield Cattle Company. Um, congratulations, Smithfield. Um, we'll now cross to them to, to say a few words. Well, Smithfield are, uh, are having a good, a good night. Barb. Hello, hello, Jerry. It's been a long time since we've seen you. It has, yes. Um, you, you haven't aged today, where I, I have. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you've had a good night. Oh, um, Jerry, thank you very much. We couldn't be more excited. We're at Gundawindi near our sapphire feedlot. We've obviously just coming off the back of the win from James, uh, and we just couldn't be more excited to be. Uh, the winners of this Community Heroes Award, which is a new award sponsored by Lalamand, and Lalamand are such wonderful sponsors of Alpha over many, many years. And I particularly loved this award because this is where I feel uh, our business shines because we are, we are operating in small communities and we really need to be able to show that we are integrated into these communities. We're not just an add-on business that, um, you know, so it's about making sure that all of our staff and the communities that support our feedlots know that we are here and we're one. So we couldn't be more excited. Now, the bloke on your right there is being very quiet at the moment. Does he have something to contribute? <laughs> this is my dad, Robert Smith, also known as Rooster. And I didn't I did bring dad in because he actually instilled in us this this ethic of giving back to community. And dad's been doing it. And I'll stop talking now because I think dad probably should say something. But yeah, it, we are a family business and we support community and we've been doing it for a very long time. So Robert, you've seen you've seen the business grow over the years. You must be very proud right now, today. Very, very proud, Jerry. Um, it's been a long haul. We've crossed a lot of dry gullies and uh, so proud to see what's been achieved this year. Terrific. Well, well done. So tonight, Bob, you have picked up um, the Young Feedlot of the Year, uh, this award, and you also had a finalist in your daughter, I believe. So That's right. you've had a good night. We certainly have, and we love this industry, and we are so proud to be a part of it. So thank you very much, Alpha. Thank you, Lalamant. And thank you, Jerry, for coming back and emceeing this wonderful event. It's been a pleasure. It's a shame we couldn't be there in person, but hopefully next year. Thank you very much, Bob. Cheers. Thank you. Now, the Australian Feedlot <laughs> Competition <laughs> celebrations continue. Uh, it, this is an initiative of the Australian Lock Feeders Association, Alpha, since its inception in 1991, the competition has aimed to encourage continuous improvement within the feedlot industry and to recognize those feedlots that are operating their business at the forefront of the principles of the National Feedlot Assurance Scheme, or NFAS. The competition is open to all NFAS accredited feedlots and focuses on driving best practice and uncovering feedlots that are truly exceeding the status quo. The competition is split into four size categories based on the constructed head capacity of the feedlot and the winner will be determined per category. From an entry pool of 35 feedlots across the nation, nine have been named finalists in the lead up to the winner announcement tonight for each size category in the Australian feedlot of the year. The competition is structured around the five core principles of NFAS, quality assurance culture, product integrity, environmental responsibility, animal welfare responsibility, and business planning. Within these pillars, um, areas were explored by the independent judging panel, including innovation, 
employer of choice, chain of responsibility, and community amenity and social accountability, which have helped to set the top performing feedlots apart. So the competition involves two judging rounds. The first round is conducted by Osmeet in conjunction with the feedlots annual emphasis audit and is based on verifying entrance response to their online self-assessment questionnaire provided at the time of entry. The top scores from around one reveals the competition finalists who progress to round two. Round two provides finalist feedlots with the opportunity to further demonstrate to an independent judging panel what sets their feedlot apart. In usual circumstances, it involves the judging panel visiting the feedlot and meeting with the feedlot manager. However, due to COVID-19, this year, this final round was conducted fully online in August, September. Points are accumulated between rounds to determine the overall winners. And the judging panel commented, and I quote, the finalists in the competition this year should be commended for their efforts in striving to push the status quo and be the best they can be, end quote. By entering, feedlots receive valuable benchmarking feedback and winning provides feedlots with the opportunity to take advantage of the considerable marketing benefits associated with winning the prestigious award. Now, let me introduce the grand finalists per size category of which there are four. A winner will be announced per category. The first category is under 3,000 head category. And the finalists are Paradise Beef Feedlot from WA and Waruna Feedlot from Queensland. And the winner is Paradise Beef from, from, from Western Australia. Well done, Paradise Beef. Um, it, we, do we have somebody on, on screen from Paradise Beef? We are Paradise Beef, established Hello. in 2009, family yeah. owned and operated business. We aim to make a positive contribution to the feedback wow. industry oh. by employing passionate people who think outside of the box to create and implement innovative changes within the industry. As part of our quality assurance and integrity model, we have worked with local IT company to right. develop our own feedlot software application to be used for IT. Approximately 70% of our cattle are custom fed for clients for both domestic and international markets, with us assisting to market cattle on behalf of our clients. The feedlot app covers pen management, feed ration management, days on feed, stock inventory, and feed costing overview providing full traceability from induction to loadout, assisting to ensure we are meeting NFAS requirements to suit our market's quality standards. We feed between eight to 10,000 cattle per year on close to three hectares. We utilize effluent irrigated paddocks for backgrounding cattle. As we are in a high rainfall area with around 900 millimeters annually, we design from concept, engineered build and utilize a dome shelter. This has seen our winter average daily gain performance increase by up to 25%. We are always looking at ways to minimise our environment impact and enhance sustainability by working with industry experts to manage effluent and waste, ensuring our effluent irrigated pastures for backgrounding are balanced by monitoring soil tests and managing key nutrients such as phosphorus. Utilising gear-driven irrigation sprinklers that stimulate biology before paddock application. We work with a microbiologist to look at the effects of beneficial microbe application in pens to mitigate air emissions for improved air quality outcomes by lowering methane and ammonia production and noxious odours. Our manure is also composted for use by leading vineyards and organic farmers in the region. We are always engaging and collaborating with the agricultural sector and have participated in the Perth Royal Show Carcass Comp over many years. We excelled on the hook in 2019 and were awarded the Grand Champion Carcass title. We encourage our team to engage with community and industry to share knowledge, educate and inspire. We aim to always celebrate with clients and business partners throughout the season. Hello. Hello. 
Thank How you. are you? Tell us a bit about your operation. You're in WA. You're one of the few feedlots in WA. You're in a, an area that has got reasonable rainfall, which I guess right. is a good help. It is a good help and not a good help. Um, uh, our feedlot is, is in Donnybrook um, in the southwest and sits uh, located pretty much dead smack in the middle of all sale yards, the main sale yards. Uh, so logistics works really well for us, but we do, this year we'll have over a thousand mils of rain. So it's um, competitive and, um, and that's why we built the dome to create shelter more than, more than um, more shade. We need shelter. Right. Uh, keep the cattle warm. Yeah. And um, what are your aspirations for this coming year based on issues such as weather, climate in particular, which is ever changing? Um, there's, a, there's a few challenges. Uh, well, in the future, what we will look at is the type of cattle that, that come in the feed. Um, you know, structurally, uh, sound is, 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 is key for us. We are on a compact clay gravel, uh, uh, you know, we're a DER licensed feedlot, so we have to be on a compact sur surface. So uh, you, you have the trouble with, with footlock and issues like that. So choosing the right cattle for the feedlot. Um, we mainly feed for domestic and we do a little bit for international 200 day grain fed cattle. So the, the heavier cattle um, mainly go in the dome and the domestic cattle will stay outside because they can handle the, the, the future of our weather. Um, we don't really get a lot of heat down here. So our hottest day might be 40, 41 degrees and it'll only last for one or two days. Um, so we get to see breeze coming in, you know, in the afternoon. So we're quite blessed with that. Um, but, you know, so summer feeding for us is, is glorious down, down here. And, um, uh, just winter feeding is our biggest issue. So you're doing a bit for tourism as well as for uh, raising beef with your comments there. Thank yeah. you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And uh, let's see how you go. Uh, good to have you, you know, on board. Before, um, before I finish, I'd just like to say a few thank yous. Uh, thank you to the other uh, entries um, that entered into the, into the feedlot. This is our second year and uh, encourage for every feedlot to, to have a go at this. Um, the other people I, I like to say thank you to is um, to our, the employees of Paradise Beef, and they're all here today. And um, without them, you know, we we don't exist. They keep me, Josie, and our, our three boys under ten. Um, you know, in you know, in a good level of mine, and, and you know, they keep the cattle and our new in, innovation ideas. You know, uh, we succeed with a good team behind us and, and that's why that's why we won the award. Also I'd say thank you to my family, mum and dad, both sides and the in-laws. They have helped us 12 years ago. I had a crazy dream and I look where we are today. So thanks to them and my amazing partner, my wife, and my three boys. Sort of well done. So um <coughs> thanks. Um before I finish I'd just like to say thanks to my clients who we, we service. We're a custom based speed lock. Um, to the domestic clients, Johnson Meat, Coles, and Woolworths. Without you guys, uh, we wouldn't be here. Our international clients, that, that, you know, hard still dealing with our China customers, and we're still doing some. So um, thanks to our international guests and our, our amazing cattle buyer in WA. Probably doesn't like his name mentioned, so I won't mention his name, but he knows who he is. And, you know, thank you. And um, to the industry, uh, I know Paradise Beef will continuously looking to find innovation technology um, to support the industry. We're, we're here, um, it's for the industry, and um, thanks again for this award. It means a lot. Well done. Okay, so uh, um, our next category is uh, 3001 to 8000, and the entrance in this category, CAM Agricultural Group from Wonga Plains in Queensland, and Gundamain Feedlot in New South Wales. And the winner is... Gundamain, Tess, well done, Tess. I, I, I Good presume. afternoon, and welcome to Gundamain Feedlot. We're situated near Yagara in the Kabon Shire. Currently, we're in lockdown. 
So well, if you, you can't come to us, we'll show you virtually what our feedlot is like. Dunder Main Feedlot has been around since 2001, but as a farming family, the Herberts have been around since the first fleet convict John Herbert was granted land outside Sydney. The Herberts have been farming on this site, just across the road from here, since the 1870s. The feedlot itself was built in 2001 and stocked in 2002. Since then, we've grown from owning 40 head of cattle through our custom feeding days to having at any one time a capacity for 12,500 head of our own cattle on feed at two sites. We pride ourselves on being a generally family owned and run operation. Three generations have worked on and in this feedlot, and we currently have the third working with us. We also pride ourselves on our close association with a small town just four kilometres from here. Andrew was born here and our kids grew up here. We love the links that our feedlot provides to our local town, our neighbours and our region. Cabon Shire, Australia's food basket. We're proud of our strong partnerships along the supply chain, which have been in place for many years. We're also proud of our business's emphasis on sustainable production in all the meanings of that word through our approach to people in our community, the animals in our care, the stewardship of our environment, and our economic resilience through the times that we've been here and into the future. We're proud of our heritage here and our contribution to regional production of food and fiber and the flow on benefits that a feedlot can provide, all the while producing quality grain-fed beef for our <coughs> customers. We look forward to continuing to do this work for many generations to come. And Tess uh, joins us now with uh, a bevy of people, one of whom is masked behind you. Congratulations, Tess. Thank you, Jerry, and it's lovely to see you again. It's lovely to be seen by you, Tess. Um, tell us how your operation has changed over the past 12 to 24 months and, and what impact has issues like COVID played in, in, your, in your life and work? Well, it's interesting. When we filmed that video, obviously we were in lockdown and so we couldn't move anywhere. It was just work and family and that was about it. Now we've opened up. New South Wales has had Freedom Day, so it's much freer now, but it still had an impact on our business on our interactions with people. And obviously it still had an impact on this awards ceremony. So I'm so pleased it's been able to go ahead, even if it's just virtual. Mm. And uh, what about um, e exports? Um, how has COVID affected your ability to, to sell your product? Well, the demand for beef continued, particularly in the early stages of COVID. So to be honest, um, other than uh, rules, regulations, masking up, QR codes, lockdowns, dealing with all of that, some freight issues. It didn't affect our business at all. We were an essential service for New South Wales, so we managed to remain open. Um, our people managed to go to work every day. We continued, and there was um, increased demand for beef, particularly during the early stages of lockdown in New South Wales. Yeah, because there was nothing else to do except eat, really, wasn't there? <laughs> Eat and cook, yeah, a lot of cooking, a lot of sourdough and a lot of beef menu recipes coming out. So beef was on the menu. Yeah. Um, Tess, you've been involved at uh, Alpha at a, at a council level too for, for quite some time. What changes are you seeing in the industry that the industry itself needs to stay abreast of? Oh, look, I haven't been involved in Alpha Council for a few years now, um, Jerry, but... Um, still obviously keeping abreast of what issues are affecting. Um, Alpha Council is doing an, an amazing job, particularly the staff and the board, in um, informing their members about uh, what's happening with COVID, um, what should be happening with their staff. Um, to me, a highlight has been the training packages that have been released during COVID. Um, so look, thank you to Alpha staff and the board for the work they've done during, you know, a really challenging year and a half to keep things going the way and to improve on the way we're doing things. Yeah, terrific. Uh, congratulations uh, once again, Tess, uh, and more power to your elbow, as they would say in Ireland. Well done. A few quick thank yous, if I could, Jerry. Please. 
Um, look, a thank you to um, Alpha, um, Osmead and Integrity Systems for um, bringing this um, initiative back to feedlots. I think it's really important to reward feedlots. Um, a big congratulations to Wonga Plains. We go head to head every time we have this. And I know it's close, Bryce, but it'll be your turn next time, Wonga. <laughs> Um, congratulations to the other category winners um, and, um, and to be also to the other award winners on today. I'd like to also thank uh, our staff at both of our feed yards um, and my family in particular here behind me um, for all the work that they do to make this happen. Thanks, Jerry. You better introduce them now rather than just give them that generic who's so, who here. Uh, Kate and Herbert. Uh, Ed Wallace, Caitlin's partner. Yep. I think a few of you would remember this guy, Andrew Herbert. Oh, Andrew, yes. <laughs> and my son, Lachlan Herbert. Yeah, well done. Well, congratulations, well done. Thank you, Jerry. The next category we're going to do is the 8,001 to 15,000 head category. And we have two contenders here. Gunny Feedlot in New South Wales and Morton Company, Pine Grove Feedlot in Queensland. And let's see who the winner is. Gunny is uh, the winner. Okay. Yeah, to be real. Okay. Hmm. That's all right. There's the crew from uh, Guni. Mark Byrne is the man who joins us. Congratulations, Mark. All right, Jerry. Just me here tonight. Yeah. Uh, the rest, the rest are at home and and viewing via their own sites, but just just me here. So, how's your year been? Well, it's been really good. Um, you know, after coming out of you know such a horrible drought, um, you know we've had. Uh, you know, I think we were averaging 24 mil of rain for eight weeks through the winter months and probably too wet, really. But, uh, you know, great for the environment, great for, you know, groundwater. We, we, we struggled a bit water-wise through the drought and, uh, you know, the aquifers are, are, are back up full. Um, yeah, so everything's very good. Yeah. I've yet to hear a farmer say <clears throat> the weather is absolutely perfect. It's always <laughs> Too wet or too dry, isn't it? Uh -huh. Ideal conditions uh, don't come along all that often. Um, so how did the drought affect your productivity in terms of what you could run on the on the on the spread? Uh, quite significantly. We were down to um, at our lowest 25% of occupancy uh, due to water restrictions. So I think we got down to uh, the last 15 megs in our 
250 meg dam and, and we got blue green algae because there's been no flushes in there and uh, it was getting hot and shallow and uh, we lost 90 great big um, uh, cod that we'd, we'd farmed in there or twine them had back in the uh, early 90s and uh, up to a metre long. So that was pretty tragic for for um, for the site. And uh, but you know it it, it uh, our, our aquifers were you know probably down to forty percent of efficiency, and uh, so we had to drop numbers, cart water in, and mm. and then push through loads. Since then we had we had a two hundred another two hundred meg dam um, built in uh, December eighteen, but it didn't fill till. Uh, uh, February 20, um, so we didn't have any capacity there. Mm. And recently we've got another 300 megs uh, dam licence. So we've sort of, uh, we've come out of that and, and, and we're in a good position now. We've got 800 megs of licensed water and, you know, that sort of sets us up now to go to 14 and potentially to 20,000 um, if that's the aspirations of the business. Okay. Well, well done. Now, I suppose you have some thank yous as well before we move on to the next uh, category. Yeah, so obviously all the, the sponsors and, and um, the, you know, the supporters of, of this uh, great contest. I, I, I mean, I've, I think we've been a finalist for each of um, the, the, the section we're in um, for the last 15 odd years and uh, this is the first win, so that's nice. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to thank, uh, you know, Hancock, um, you know, for the good support that's there with Greg and Mary Ann Gibbons in particular, Ross Keane, Grant Brockman, Dan Wade, and obviously the chairman at the top. Um, and, and also uh, Pine Grove. I know Pine Grove um, feed lot is has put a great effort in. Um, they were very kind to send uh, a few messages today. And uh, um, so, you know, we, we're good supporters of each other. Um, I know we've battled it out with Cam and, and uh, Andrew and Tess over many years when, we, when our two sections, the, the, um, the, the under, under eight and, and over eight sections were together. Um, uh, called, I guess uh, it's called healthy competition, and uh, yes, you learn from your adversaries, uh, Mark. Yeah, yeah. So just quickly, I, I'd I'd like to thank um, obviously my wife Sandy McNaughton. Um, Food lotting is a tough gig. It's um, you know it's it's a it's a it's a seven day commitment, and so you can't do it without family. So thank you to Sandy, um, particularly to the staff around us. Um, you know. Uh, Sarah Andrews, our admin manager, Noel Simula, our um, mill manager, uh, Brad Williams, our livestock manager, and um, and uh, uh, Dustin Pratt, and our, our um, maintenance supervisor manager. So you know they all really run the the show. They they are integral to everything we do. Uh, they give a great commitment. They they do a lot of mentoring with staff, um, and uh, you know without them, as anyone in feedlot world knows, it's a team effort. Um, so a, a great thank you to them. Well done, Mark. Uh, congratulations and uh, thanks for joining us with the, uh, for a chat. Yeah, thank you, Jerry. And our final category is the uh, fifteen thousand and one above 15,001 uh, head category. We've got uh, three contenders, um, AA Co. Brunu Feedlot in Queensland, Taze Australia Jindalee Feedlot in New South Wales, and Taze Australia Charlton Feedlot in Victoria. And the winner is... Jindalee Feedlots. Hey, I'm Shane Bullock, General Manager of Tees Australia's Jindalee Feedlot, an 18,000 head yard located in the Riverina of New South Wales and one of Tees Australia's beef production enterprises. Tees Australia operates with strong family values at its core and at Jindalee 
We operate as a small family as well, striving each and every day to produce the best grain-fed beef and what that we can. We believe our success comes not just from being good operationally, but then from being leaders in the areas of safety, animal welfare, environmental management, sustainability, social accountability, and this really goes to being our license to operate and is valued above all. At Chindalee, we have over 165 years combined experience in lot feeding and with a culture for involvement in change, innovation and R&D, we see ourselves as leaders for improvement in the Australian lot feeding industry. As a team, we are very proud to be producing Australian grain fed beef, the best beef in the world. Well done. And uh, oh, Shane joins us. Well done, Shane. Congratulations. Um, you, had, you had two uh, feedlots in the competition. Uh, how did you, how did you, you know, how did you separate them as it were? Yeah, well, it's, um, it's interesting you, you talk about that right at the start when, uh, when we were going into the, the second round. Um, we organised a bit of a meeting with, with Grant who um, you know, oversees all the yards in the T's group. And um, we, uh, we sort of were gonna talk about what, what we might put forward as uh, the second part of our, our entry and what we might talk about for each feedlot and get a, get a few hints off Grant and ideas off him. Um, and I have to say, he, he organized a meeting with, uh, with both of us, both feedlots together. And it was one of the quietest meetings that's ever been held, Jerry, for a second round of competition and, and what we uh, what we might put forward and discuss for each feedlot. So uh, that was that was very interesting early on through the process. So there were no secrets shared. You kept uh, you kept your own counsel. Yeah, we did did Jerry very much so. So um, the the success. What what is responsible for the success of Genderly feedlot? I guess it all starts with the with the team that we've got, Jerry, and, and we don't um, you know we don't sit still. We we're feeding cattle. I guess that's the basic part of, of what we do every day. But we're also doing lots and lots of other things as well. Um, we enjoy doing uh, participating in a lot of R and D work. Um, so that's uh, that's helping us with change. You know the team's very good at change, and uh, like to be at the forefront of those sorts of things. We're very involved in the community. Um, in, in supporting schools, etc., um, and uh, and charity groups um, raised a lot of money and certainly helped out there where we can, um, and and we also train our people, um, do a lot of training, and uh, and support local businesses as well. You know we're integral to the community and just always trying to improve on site what we're doing. Whether that's handling cattle facilities that we're building, have a lot of input there, and uh, yeah. Just, just never, never stand still. I guess, Jerry. Do you have a, a growth objective, or are you happy with the, the, the where you are now, with above fifteen thousand head? Uh, it'd be nice to, um, nice to expand the yard a little further. Um, we, you know, we've we've got capacity to do that. Got a license to do that, um, but uh, yeah, haven't haven't done so yet. We'll see what comes in the future. All right. Well, no doubt you are ready for a beer to celebrate your win. Um, Shane, thank you and congratulations once again. Thank you very much, Jerry. Shane from uh, Jin Lee. Well, that brings us to the end of the presentation. So big congratulations to all our winners and indeed our finalists as well, because we still put in a heap of work to get to be finalist and who knows, Maybe next year you will be the winner. If you'd like to know more about any of the finalists or the winners tonight, you'll find their information on the Alpha website. That's feedlots.com.au. Thanks for joining us. Um, and well done to all our winners tonight. We look forward to seeing you at BFEX in 2022.